Hey Sarsis and fans, it's Gloyth here from Renegade Squadron. Today I want to take the time to talk to you guys about something that I personally use every single day. And if you're looking at my headset, you'll notice what it is, but in case you're not aware of what I'm using, I'm currently using what we call Track Hour 5. And this is how I look around in my cockpit, up, down, left, right. And if you look, if I turn my head here, you can see that I'm using a custom Track AR device called the Loop Clip. And it is a lifesaver. So in this video, we're going to be covering a few things. One, we're going to be covering how to get Track IR, how to set it up, how to dial in your profiles, and how to set it up in Star Citizen. So stay tuned and uh, let's hop into the video. All right, guys. So the first thing you're going to want to do is head over to the Track IR website, and that's found at naturalpoint.com. So while there, you can find Track IR. And this is the Track IR 5. This is the one you're going to want. You're not going to want the 3, the 4. You're going to want the 5 if you're going to want the best immersive head tracking experience. And if you look here, we've got six different axes. And the ones that Star Citizen currently use are the yaw and the pitch. One day we'll get forward for zooming in and out. It's just not there yet. There's some videos explaining it as well on the website. And this is kind of where this device really stands out from a lot of other options, even some of the free options. And, that, and that's, it's got a very high field of view. It's got a great resolution, but this 120 FPS sample rate is super, super important. Webcams are gonna be at, you know, 60 or 90, and this is 120. It just doesn't get better than this. And then it's fully customizable. This should fit on pretty much any monitor. I've got a curved monitor and it fits on there just great. And here's kind of the technical specs of it right here. And just kind of a breakdown between the four and the five. You know, again, go with the five, it's just worth it. Don't get the four, it's just not worth it in my opinion. If you're gonna spend, you know, for another 50 bucks, you get a much better device. And then if we look right here, we've got our buying options. So you can buy directly here, or you could go to Amazon or a few other retailers. But I would say a couple of things here. If you plan on getting the loop clip eventually, and you just want that instead, just get this for now and then get your track AR loop clip from loop clip on Facebook. So otherwise I would just say, if you want everything ready to go, just get the pro bundle. This is a great device, great, great clip. I would say it's even better than the loop clip for accuracy. Now the only downside is this thing gets caught in everything. And if you guys have watched like Star Citizen Live or a little Yogi there, he's got that track AR and you know, what you're probably not seeing is that it's wrapped all over his headset, probably. It just gets really messy. So just be aware, if you want the convenient and wireless option, go ahead and message Loop Clip on Facebook. All right, guys, so if you're like me and you wanted a wireless option of Track Hour, you're going to want to go ahead and pick up this Loop Clip. And you can do that by going to Facebook.com slash Loop Clip. If you decide to click on Shop Now, it's going to take you to a place. You're not going to see them on here at all. So what you're actually going to want to do is you're going to want to email him. So you can either email him or send him a message on Facebook. That's what I've done. It worked really slick. It's probably going to take a few weeks, maybe even a month, just to get a batch done to sell to you. So just be aware, this clip is rechargeable. So yeah, just really cool. So if you want to pick up a wireless option, this is how you do it. Ignore this. Just message the developer and seller here. All right, guys. So the next thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and head to products. And then you're going to want to go down to software here. And this is where you're going to be able to download the latest version of TrackR. So I would go ahead and click on the latest one to download it. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. So in this case, I've got it here. I'm gonna just act like I'm gonna do a repair. You would click install and it would install. So in this case, I don't need to do any of that because I've already got it installed. So I'm gonna go ahead and click cancel and then finished. All right. So now we're gonna go ahead and dive into our track hour. And this is what it looks like. And if you're just starting out, it's gonna look something like this, right here, default. And you're gonna notice there's not really a whole lot of dead zone here. 
And just me looking down at this screen, you can already tell right here, I am way off center, right? So there is almost no dead zone whatsoever. And if you're a pilot, if you're flying and aiming, one of the most important things, especially if you're a Star Citizen player, is having that dead zone. That dead zone is super important so that you can aim, you know, move your head just a little bit and it does not affect your aim. So something that's really important with that is making sure you're setting a proper dead zone. So we're gonna go ahead and flip to mine right here. And now I'm using an ultra wide 3440 by 1440p monitor. And you'll notice it looks like this. Look how I'm looking down right here on my screen. And if you look, this hardly has moved at all. That is what you want. You wanna be able to move your head just a little bit because when you're dogfighting, you are gonna be moving in your cockpit. You are gonna, you can't just expect yourself not to. And just me kind of talking here, you can see down below here how much this is moving. It is so important to have that dead zone. And for you guys that have got 27 inch monitors that are non ultra wide or even smaller, these dead zones are gonna be smaller. And essentially these curves are gonna be a little bit steeper because you wanna be able to move your head and not run out of screen resolution or real estate, I should say. So super important that these are more ramping if you've got those smaller monitors. But in this case, we see we've got the dead zone here. So you're probably wondering, okay, Golo, you've got your custom profile here, but what about us that are running a monitor that's smaller, like a 27, a 25 inch, maybe even smaller than that? How do I make a good track hour profile? And like I had mentioned, we want these to ramp. So what I would say a person wants to do and they are free to take my profile and import it. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that in a little bit here. But one thing you can do is you can grab this slider right here. This is the dead zone. So the last dot here, I should say the first dot, allows you to set the dead zone. So I would first bring these closer. And then what you can do, and this is kind of really kind of cool here to help dial it in, is to actually go up to motion control you'll see speed and smooth. So by clicking speed, you can actually start ramping this up, which is freaking awesome if you ask me. Because this is gonna allow you to slowly dial in, hey, what's just right for you? And still keep a somewhat of a dead zone that's not too big. And you can always move this out. Keep that dead zone if you want. Maybe you've made it too small. You can always do that, but you can always then ramp this up to what you want. And if you decide, hey, 3.5 is awesome, that's, you know, maybe take a snippet of this, like a screenshot or something, and then start moving these dots up to these points as your default location. Otherwise, every time you log in, you're gonna have to redo this speed control here. So, like I said, this is kind of a good way of you kind of tuning on the fly how you want your head movement to be. So right here, if I move my head, I'm almost at 70 degrees, just kind of moving my head, and I'm not even off the screen yet. So there's a lot you can do here with these sliders. Then there's also smoothing, right? So what does this do? Well, let's take a look. Not a whole lot. Moving on, you're probably wondering, how do I go from this default profile to Galois profile? So to get to this, you're going to have to know how to access your track hour folder. And that is in your app data folder. And so we're going to go ahead and we're going to pull this up. And you're probably going to notice I don't have an app data folder. I don't know how to get to it. There's no option. If you type it in the, the window search box, nothing pulls up. So the best way to do that is to just go ahead and paste this into your file explorer. You got your percent app data percent sign hit enter and it should take you to here and from here you're going to want to go to your roaming if we look we see natural point so this is the company that owns track so we're going to go ahead and open that up and we'll see track R5 and then we'll see profiles so something that's really important here guys is you'll notice that there's an order here we've got glowy profile one to one smooth XYZ, and you'll look right here. If we look at our track hour, we can see something very similar. But we also have a default. We don't have a default in here, right? So one thing that's super important to understand is that 
whenever you do an import of a profile, you're gonna almost always have to change back to the custom profile in this dropdown right here. It's always gonna be set as default. The one way to get around that after you import a profile of mine or anybody else's is just take this default profile and just put like XYZ in front of it so it falls to the bottom of the list as you guys can see here. Just kind of a little hint so you don't have to keep changing it from your custom profile. So this is how you get to the profile. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to want to go to the Google Drive link that I'm gonna go ahead and provide with my profile and maybe a few other profiles. And you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and download that and then you're gonna to wanna to copy and paste that into here. And if you want whatever profile you want to be the top profile, it's gotta be in alphabetical order here. So in this case, obviously G is before, you know, O, S, and X. So that's why it shows up here. So just keep that in mind you know, whatever profile you want to be first and automatically loaded has got to be the one that's first alphabetically. So that's how you access this track our profile. If you decided to export it, it would be the same thing. Your profile would be in here and you just copy it, paste it somewhere else and then, you know, send it to somebody if you wanted to. So that's how you access this. So I've added Galoith here and yeah, you should be able to access this via the Google Drive links so I'm gonna go ahead and provide you guys. All right, guys, so you finally made it this far and you're now in game and you're probably wondering why the heck when you turn your head, track hour isn't working. Well, I'll tell you what, it's just not enabled by default. But before we do that, we want to take care of some business. And what I mean by that, I mean by disabling look ahead mode. So we're going to go ahead and have our options here. We're going to scroll down. go nice and slow so you don't miss it. Look ahead for pilot turret. We want to turn that off. So there's two places. There's this and then there should be down here. Look ahead automatically. We want to turn that off as well. And yeah, if you guys have, if you guys got this on, make sure to disable this as well. And then we want to go to our comms, FOIP and head tracking. And we want to find our source. So we're using track IR. If you were using face wear, you could do this well, but to be honest with you, track IR just puts this to shame. So we're going to select track IR and we're going to go ahead and enable. And then personally, I just leave this alone. I just use track IR to do my centering it works out pretty darn good. When we start flying, we're going to fly and voila. And look around down below and I find this super helpful because if I'm gonna go ahead and look at my MFD I can look at it if it's off-site I can kind of look down at it if I look over here I can, now I can just click on that it just makes navigating everything in your ship so much easier especially when stuff gets way all over the place so it's just so handy you know I can look up you know, one of the things I always talk to people about is, you know, keeping your eye on the target. And let's say, for example, this asteroid was my target, right? I'm flying past and we're, we're jousting. I can just look up and just keep my head on him the entire time. That's why track AR is just so darn awesome. So, yeah, that's how you set it up in game. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up our track AR5 guide. And with that, just make sure if you want to win that Aspera Shrike, the missile variant of the Talon, you know, the ship that's packing 24 size 3 missiles, I would make sure to like, subscribe, and comment on any of our videos for a chance to win that in November. So with that, I will see you guys next time. Renegade Squadron signing off.